Tom Trento, director of the United West, with some sad news, but uh, not that sad. Um, it's sad in the sense that we lost a very dear friend on December 12, 2018, James Aloysius Lyons, better known as Ace, Admiral Ace Lyons. But not sad in the sense that at 91 years old, this amazing individual was an American legend, a, a figure of history, one of the bravest, clearest, most courageous men that we ever met in our lives. And uh, we just want to take a, a moment to honor his memory, his life, and to thank him for how he impacted everyone here at the United West and all the true patriots in the United States of America. Look, as a young kid, he went to Annapolis, wet behind the ears, and we don't have the time to list all of his achievements. Go look it up, Admiral Ace Lyons. But he, he rose to the level of the commander of the Pacific Fleet. All the boats, hundreds of boats, thousands of airplanes, hundreds of thousands of men, firepower that could destroy all the nations in the world. He was answerable to the Joint Chiefs and to the President, this individual. But if he were here today and he's been in our studio and we've done so much with him, you sit down, have a cup of coffee with this guy. He's a regular guy. He was at the heights of American history, but he treated every human being as a, as a fellow American. Unless you, tried to, unless you tried to bullshit the guy, then he was going to tear your head off. And he would tell you, I'm going to rip your head off, and here's why. That's how brave and strong he was. We worked with him, the United West, on right here, on Aaron Vaughn, SEAL Team 6, the shootdown of Extortion 17. Ace Lines helped us with that tremendously, gave his uh, information and his experience and intelligence on it. We also worked with him on, uh, on the Iran deal, stopping uh, the Iran deal, interviewed him, sp spoke with him different places. But I personally had the honor of being one of the uh, 19 authors of Team B, Sharia, the Threat to America, and Ace was, was one of those authors too. And like I said, an admiral treating everyone like a regular person. Great guy. We're going to miss him. The country's going to miss him. Heaven's going to be a little crazier place, but a better place because Ace Lyon's life truly should be remembered, reflected upon, and honored. We're just going to play uh, some scenes from our experiences with our very, very, very dear friend. Ace, we love you, man. You rest in peace. Job well done. Broadcasting live on the UnitedWest.org AM Radio Network and simulcasting on DirecTV, iHeartRadio, Roku, and the World Wide Web, this is Enemies of the State with Tom Trento. Does anybody really believe that the United States should use its massive military power to destroy the nuclear infrastructure of Iran? You bet people believe that. In fact, on our groundbreaking show, Enemies of the State, we feature one such person. Uh, but I've always been curious, where did the, uh, the nickname Ace come from? Ace came from playing football at the Naval Academy. <laughs> nothing, nothing exotic. Nothing, that's it? Oh, you played football at the Naval Academy. Um, I, okay, that sounds good. I thought there was something more to it, uh, maybe. Yeah, nothing dramatic like <laughs> okay would be affiliated. Just it's a name that uh, uh, my uh, classmates um, um, and teammates put on me, and um, it stuck for all these years. All these and years. Nobody knows me by any other name other than Ace. Than Ace. And uh, what, uh, what position did you play for the Naval Academy? Yeah, fine. Oh, well, man, you know, new information here. Three minutes of your presentation caught fire and went around the world virally. We're going to play that right now. We all say we have to identify the threat. Well, I think the one who identified it the best was Erdogan from... Turkey, when he said, Islam is Islam. There are no modifiers. Democracy is the train we ride to our ultimate objective. He couldn't have said it any plainer. 
And until you recognize that Islam is a political movement masquerading as a religion, you're never going to catch, come to grips with it. And as far as a strategy, let me just conclude Last one point. thing. And as I just had in my latest op-ed, the Obama administration has a strategy. It's very simple. Any thinking American should be able to grasp it. It's anti-American, anti-Western. It's pro-Islamic. It's pro-Iranian and pro-Muslim Brotherhood. You, you said more in three minutes there than most of the guys up on the Hill in the House and the Senate have said in a lifetime. When you heard about the Benghazi tragedy where we lost four great Americans, what went through your heart and your mind at that moment? Well, what took place there, my first reaction, the fact that there was no response uh, to this tragedy to me was un-American. This is not the way we respond to our people who we put out in the field and who are carrying out their duties and carrying out the responsibilities that have been assigned to them. So to me, this was just, uh, as I say, un-American, a tragedy that never had to happen. Uh, here, here's, here's the thing that's boggled <clears throat> my mind and the minds of many serious people on this. The response from the administration as to why didn't you send help? The response was they couldn't get there in time. And maybe for the non-thinking person, they couldn't get there in time has some sort of resonance because there's a, they must have in their mind when this is going to end. But how were they prescient? How did this administration know when this was going to end? Therefore, no sense sending it because it's going to end before they get there. How do you handle something like that? Well, first of all, uh, you don't know when it's going to end. In fact, the resources that I ticked off could have been there in roughly two and a half hours. You know, we've known before, if you take uh, F-16 aircraft and you make a low pass in full afterburner over a site, those terrorists on the ground will scatter because they know the capabilities of that F-16 and they're not prepared to meet their 72 virgins, as far as I can see. Tom Trento for the United West. As many of you know, we're producing an investigative documentary on the cover-up, the Obama administration cover-up, of the shoot-down of call sign extortion 17. That was the Chinook helicopter that went down in Afghanistan on August 6, 2011. 30 American souls were on board. Uh, 17 of whom were Navy SEALs, 15 of whom were SEAL Team 6. Involved from day one has been a dear friend of ours, Admiral James Ace Lyons, and he has provided direction and insight on understanding the tragedy and then figuring out what to do about it. Admiral Lyons, thank you, sir, for your tremendous work. Welcome to the show. Your thoughts on the shootdown of the Chinook that killed 30 Americans? Well, this was a tragedy that never should have happened. First of all, <clears throat> I always question when I first heard about this, the fact that we put 30 of our special forces, uh, which included 15 of our SEAL Team 6 uh, elite uh, forces into a single helicopter, which was a transportation helicopter not normally used in a hot fire situation. The second thing is that they, they sent him in to a hot fire zone that had been under attack for over three hours. We had a C-130 gunship, which was over, over the zone, but hadn't fired anything because, no suppression fire, because of the restricted rules of engagement imposed by the Obama administration. Now, so to not prepare that site before you sent in this transportation helicopter with our elite forces aboard, to me, was really unbelievable and to me was a dereliction of duty. The second thing you need to know, in addition to the 30 Americans aboard, there were eight Afghan special forces that 
were in the aircraft, but what your listeners need to know, the original eight were replaced by eight unknown Afghan special forces one minute before the helicopter took off. That to me should have been the signal to abort the mission. You didn't know that our Americans had never worked with these eight. They didn't know anything about them and why you would continue to press on uh, in that situation, knowing the environment we operate in to me was a dereliction of duty. And as the cir circumstances further evolved, they never had to be sent in the first place because the forces that they were sent in to rescue were really not in that dire situation. And this hearts and minds doctrine has confounded, confused, and created <clears throat> this restrictive rules of engagement, which has resulted in these 30 guys dying and many others dying. Now, with your extensive background as a combat officer, how do you balance winning the hearts and minds of enemies with killing the enemies to be victorious in battle? How do you bring those two together? All right, Tom, I'm glad you brought this up. Let me tell you something. In the Middle East, there's only one thing that matters, and that's street respect. And the only way you get street respect is by killing the enemy into submission. Once you do that, I guarantee you, the hearts and minds will follow. Admiral Lyons, should we work to prohibit Iran from getting a bomb, contain, and if you say prohibit, should we use military force, and if we should, when? Well, let me say, Tom, I've been trying to launch a strike against Iran for over 35 years. To me, there is no other option when you're dealing with this evil regime. And make no mistake, it's a evil regime with a seventh century mentality wrapped up in their Islamic fundamentalism. And the only sure way that we can prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon capability is through a military strike. There's no such thing as entering into any type of agreement that we would expect Iran to live up. Why would you spend billions of dollars to put your facilities underground in, into sides of mountain if this was a peaceful program? And in fact, time and time again, we find where Iran continues to cheat and deny the IAEA access to their key facilities. There's no way you can verify what their program is or what it is not. So the only sure way, and for those who say, well, it will only buy us two years, let me tell you, I'll take those two years, and if they go to build it up again, we'll take it out again. <sighs> <laughs> I know uh, it's uh, for 35 years. He's, he's, he's been preaching this and uh, it makes so much sense. I'm Hi, Tom Trento, the director of the United West with some breaking news after years of research, years of analysis, years of speaking to experts worldwide, including the B five plus one. That's right. You heard me correctly. Not the P five plus one, but the B B as in Boom, the B5 plus one, we finally reached our independent conclusion as to how to resolve the nuclear crisis between the West, the United States, Israel, America, and Iran. What's the solution to the problem? Here it is right now. Bomb, 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 Iran. Bomb, 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 Iran. Ace, from the bottom of my heart for our United West team and all our dear friends, that close circle of friends you know very well, we thank you. You lived a life well worth living. You influenced many, myself included. Thank you for that. Rest well, Ace. Job well done.